Welcome back to the Data Science with Kunal Naik show. Today we have with us a very interesting personality who does the implementation of the learning triangle. This is Paul. Welcome to the show, Paul. Hi everyone. Hi Kunal. It's a pleasure to be with you over here. So I'm a full-time data science in, uh, intern in Oerikshya. Apart from that, uh, I'm a freelancer trainer. So right now my ongoing projects are with Console Lancer LLP and Verzio. And from April, I'm going to join. Uh, I have two more pending projects, which I'll be continuing at that time. So that's quite an introduction for myself. Thank you, uh, Paul. So let's start with this question, Paul. Like, how did you come across the ML or AI industry? Right? Like, what what made you come into this particular industry? So basically, uh, if I have to break ML, there are two things in that: coding and maths. Okay. So these were the two things which I was good in. So combining both of these, I was getting only one thing that is ML. So I started studying or like evaluating everything. What are the things that are present in this field? But this pandemic was like a bloom for me, and things went really well. I got a lot of time to give in my uh, in this field. So from from probably from March when the colleges were shut down, I was. I was in my third year that time, so from that time I got a lot of time to view all of these, learn about them, and that's all uh, how I entered into this field. Absolutely. So uh, you you were able to basically um, understand or give time and spend to learn this particular thing, and so you were able to come into this field, right? Yeah. Now here's this uh, where's the, here's the fun part of it, right? Now once you decide to go into a field. Uh, there, there should be a plan that helps you get there, right? It, it's not yes. like you know, I to, data science is also again programming or something like that. It's, it's not so easy, right? You need some sort of a help or some sort of a structure. Even if you're doing it on your own, you need some structure to help you go there, right? So, what was your idea of structure? Like, how did you take that small baby steps, and uh, how did you, you know, finally? learn the for programming or start implementing stuff uh, on your own previously linkedin was not that much like it was very much new to me i didn't know much about linkedin i just knew that this is something and it does something where people get jobs i didn't know what were the various factors on that but in this pandemic what i needed was i needed a community for myself where i belong to and where there are like minded people so i that time i was very much new to linkedin so what I did was I was a very much active user of Instagram. So what I did was I created an account named Coded. It's it is still present in uh, Instagram. I'm not running it right now, but I started posting things on that. I started posting memes on anything related to IT, and then at a sudden I just shifted myself to the data science perspective, and I saw that there were a lot of people like me who wanted a community. So. I created this page right now it has a user uh, something of uh, 6000 7000 users follows i am over i am having over there so that was a place where i created a community from that community what we did we all researched from where we can get the info take info and give info so that has helped me a lot and later i moved into linkedin linkedin is again a place where you can get a lot of people who are very much uh, higher spaces than you want to belong to so that's something but the base for me will be always the instagram community which i have created i was very much active on that people told me a lot of MOOCs, so there were there are very much MOOCs, and probably the most famous one is from andrew ng the machine learning course mm -hmm. from andrew ng right so the thing which i saw that uh, the first course Absolutely. which i the first course which i did was uh, something from Udemy which was not that good as at this point of time I can say that was not that good but uh, I did it and I came to know a lot of new things like I came to know about some algorithms some things which we need and from there mm -hmm. I started gathering things up from various sources I had an Instagram community I moved into LinkedIn someone from Instagram just told me Paul uh, you are someone who can like uh, have uh, can create a uh, community on LinkedIn also. So I moved over there, tried to evaluate things up, and things went really well over there. So 
these are the basis social media is a platform for me which has helped me bloomed a lot mm, absolutely Based so you are able to basically take your uh, idea uh, along with the community and uh, you know there was some driv- drive for you to learn and uh, you know co learn from all of these elements and then be able to implement stuff right so what was your uh, uh, the uh, instagram handle and uh, uh, that you are speaking coded cod dot it 29 okay coded uh, it 29 now so this this was sort of a platform where you built a community and you are able to like create sort of an accountability that you can learn and uh, yes, further yes. grow right uh, and so you are able to yeah do all of these mooks mooks and uh, now you know which mooks yeah. are good and which mooks are bad uh, and mm-hmm. all of that right but now uh, the the interesting part of it is like for, for example you learn you learn that is one thing right like mooks you can just keep going and you can keep seeing things but then how did you put start putting things to practice like uh, how did you uh, practice the algorithms that you learned right and uh, what was some of the failure points that you initially when you are trying to learn all of these things Uh, so the uh, base thing is uh, data science is just an skill set, a skill set which is useless if we don't put it on our practical aspect. So uh, pass, I think probably from mm-hmm. March or somewhere, I just joined an internship which was unpaid. So from that internship, I got to know mm-hmm. things are very much different in this practical world and what we learn in from the MOOCs. So mm-hmm. from the MOOCs. So let's say, for example, Kaggle. Correct. So most of the Indians are the most active users in Kaggle from the 2020 survey which we got. So mm-hmm. one thing for all the users, I would like right. to say that Kaggle just provides us uh, data sets which are already most of the stuff are done. But in practical, you have right. to create that data set, and just mm-hmm. creating that data set takes a lot of sweat. so i'll just give a example of right. my Absolutely. last project which i was doing so at oidixa itself so uh, i was working on a model for creating a demand prediction model so so people know that we have lstm model or let's say arima or a profit model anything based on the user case whatever the applications are but the main thing was i have already i already know about lstm right. models and how they work but how to implement things but the means i mm-hmm. i was not having any data set and probably in a real life scenario and where i am working mm-hmm. i saw that there are more than like 50 60 uh, tables already present and probably out of that 60 70 tables i needed somewhat 10 to 12 tables from that 10 to 12 tables i need mm-hmm. particular features or particular columns joining them mixing things up first creating a data set took me probably one month as i am new to it so i'll be very true it took me almost one month and i help from my elders so that creation of data set took me a lot of time and after that things were very much easy so clean, cleaning out the data set visualizing things all the other stuff mm. but in reality the things are very mm. much different and at the end when i saw that the model was complete we needed a pipeline so that the user base whichever user base we were having they could use it <laughs> so these things were very much new which kaggle will never tell you mm. so kaggle is a good platform if you want to focus Correct. more on your algorithmic area okay so uh, the notion of data scientist has been different from different companies okay so some x company might be needing a data scientist mm. who is very much good in analytics part they will be needing someone who knows tableau power bi sql all of these a uh, mobility company or a product based company might be needing someone who knows the algorithm very much well and uh, whose job will be to create good models then there's one more user case which i have seen that is the Correct. automation data scientist okay mm. so they create mm. pipeline okay whatever models you have created mm-hmm. they will create a pipeline so that okay. people can use it or anyone anyway, whatever the user base you are having so mm. these are the notions so correct 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 so basically after doing any mooc what mm. i'll tell users is just apply for a internship okay even though it's unpaid i know I'll, i'm going to get a lot of hate for this for doing unpaid internship but uh, you know india has a very big mm-hmm. population people don't take this as a criteria that india has a very big population right. and we don't need to do uh, internships where, mm-hmm. where like the company is having some profit 
there are already various internships which are like sort of right. educational internships where companies not making any profit mm. they are just gaining the user base some are there if like correct, spark correct. foundation yeah. console lancer all of these what they do is they will give you a problem statement real life problem statement and a data set and then they will t- tell you play with this give me this answer that's it mm-hmm. they are not going to use it but they are just going to help you grow from that part. so i really like this kind of notion because india has a very big population and not everybody can get a paid internship okay. so we need various skills in the initial level which absolutely absolutely okay. even if you see i think last month or two months back amazon released a data science intern vacancy okay so i was just going through it and i was thinking of ap- applying it mm-hmm. if it was possible for me but what i found it was they were searching for people who are doing phd or master degree from top tier colleges yeah it you don't expect like phd's and all of these uh, you know getting an internship at this level yes, right yes yes so they were asking for a lot of things and that too from top tier colleges so i believe that's not quite okay so screening of students should be always based on some sort of exams where the performance is all evaluated I completely, completely agree with you. I mean, it should be performance based, not uh, pedigree based. That's what uh, uh, you mean to say. And a couple of interesting things you've made here, uh, Paul. Now you said that you know, like internship is the way to go. But uh, you know, first get yourself, uh, get a foot in the door, right? Don't wait for paid internships and all that thing. Like, at least have one two projects in your uh, in your in a kitty so that at least you know what the real experience is. a couple other things that you mentioned that hey uh, kaggle and this moocs they teach about algorithms and all that but they will not teach you how to create data sets have you come across any courses that teaches how to build the data for machine learning and all that uh, at at this point i have not seen any of the courses like that of now nobody will tell you how to create data how to get data all of these comes from the experiences uh, from the internships and all and specifically uh, people if people do internships in startup okay. i think that will help them more at least what i have seen like one of my friends is doing internship in more. some mnc Correct. so it's like spoon feeding he is getting most of the stuff hmm. and he is just doing what he is told okay so <laughs> in startup what happens right. you have a very big area of vision okay so yeah. we can evaluate a lot of things from Uh, so all the windows are very much transparent for us so we can just talk with the marketing team go to the ground team and evaluate everything so we have a lot to learn from startups also mm. and uh, so yeah startups startups is a way to go if you want to like absolutely scale up your learning and uh, yes and true that there are no courses that are there uh, uh, you know that are teaching you this but you know those skills are very essential uh, and it took one month to do that right it in real life it is even sometimes much more longer than that forget about fre- you know you being a fresher or trying to do that that's that's something uh, you know in companies here also we face that right it takes months together to pull together the data that it's not only about pulling the data it's about having the right access it's about the right uh, are you using the right data or no uh, you know is that get data getting updated or no like which mm-hmm. teams are using it which business segment is using it is it relevant to us can we link it back to uh, the the problem statement we are wor- working on right like some sometimes yeah. we have customer data but we mm-hmm. we don't know which customer is there and we we know the account name but we don't know which customer is interacting in that right so there is a there is a lot of nuances or notions that are there which you, you can only get through internships and very rightly said uh, paul now paul you have another interesting part of it that is uh, you also teach right like not only have you done so many things but you also teach you like to teach python programming and um, do you also teach ml and all that also along with python programming uh, so the thing is i have gotten a lot of offers to teach data science but i have personally told them no <laughs> because i think at this level i am not enough mm-hmm. to teach them up and the uh, believe me the pay is absolutely too amazing set but you so with python programming did you see a difference in how how much like the more you teach the more faster or quicker you are able to grasp concept this that does that happen to you yes so the thing is 
once uh, i don't know if it's with everyone but personally with me what happens is let's say i'm learning about something some very basic concept about uh, let's say about machine learning i'm learning about the regression okay so after learning regression i'm pretty sure that after a week i will forget that i'm not going to remember each and everything what is going on so the teaching is something it's like mm-hmm. taking from the community and giving back it to the community okay so it also helps me to get a lot of knowledge mm-hmm. a lot of insights so i do a lot of research to tell my students or teach my students that what is new and how can mm-hmm. it help them and how can it mm-hmm. value them and also me okay so let's say i'm teaching regression any or let's say any python basic dictionaries i'm teaching about dictionaries so there's a chance that i will be learning some various new stuff while my research is going on on that and then i will teach them up so mm-hmm. it's like a plus plus point for both of us mm-hmm. so uh you know remember those concepts when you teach more often and plus you're also uh, learning new new concepts and your the students also benefit because this they are not going to be updated as much as you are because they are you know they are just beginning to learn so if they get updated knowledge then and there then it is more more beneficial right. for them right obviously this is what something you know we wanted to bring out with uh, paul is that the learning tri- and this is called the golden triangle of learning where you learn i mean you learn and then you execute or do or like the internship or projects or something like that you do your own research and then you uh, you teach it back right so learn do teach learn do teach is is something that accelerates the amount of information you can retain when you are learning something new and truly speaking even i started in that particular format and hence i am able to uh, retain a lot of other concepts because i am i'm constantly experimenting with stuff and trying to teach something new right and that sort of retains everything in your memory and totally uh, you know relatable paul and thank you for uh, sharing that now the the aspect that i wanted to come or jump to is that now um, now you're teaching programming and all of that things right so what are the some of the common mistakes or uh, barriers Uh, or problems do you think do you think your students face commonly what are top 3 let's say challenges they face while they are learning programming okay can i give a very controversial statement so yeah, yeah. Uh, no the ed, ed tech giants or the unicorns which we are talking of i hope you are getting me which companies i'm talking of okay mm. so yes these yes, companies yes. have made students or juniors believe that programming is something like a child's play any 4 year old or 6 year old can code out and programming only means developing apps nothing more than that okay so if you even see my last post on in linkedin so mm-hmm. it was something similar to that itself so the story was something so i was mm-hmm. taking a batch uh, some ex company as a freelancer trainer so there was a student who told me sir i understood everything whatever you have taught me so it was for python basics so the last thing was i was covering of errors and exceptions and all the ending part so she said that sir everything is okay i learned everything and thank you so much sir and but sir you didn't teach me uh, to make apps <laughs> if i'm not able to make apps then what what's the use <laughs> of learning programming i was like what <laughs> what uh, what is going on so i tried to uh, console her correct correct so i asked her what was the law like why is she asking this mm. and what were the basically the reason why she is having this kind of thought mm. Okay. Mm. so she said that uh, in tvs i have saw that 10 year 12 year old are making apps and google microsoft mm. they are fighting to hire them <laughs> for crores so Oh. you know the belief system the belief <laughs> system has been completely manipulated with time huh. even the parents parents like i believe correct. you are correct. from the tech background i'm mm-hmm. from the tech background my parents are from the tech so things are quite easy for us but think about people who are not from the tech background we can easily manipulate them just by telling some big words let's say i'm telling aapke bete ko mm-hmm. polymorphism sikha denge aur wo 50 lakh kamayega bhi kabhi so right. <laughs> they don't understand but they are thinking okay polymorphism kitna bada word hai ye yeah. so these are the things which i highly face challenge mm-hmm. so 
so ed tech giants have just manipulated the, the thoughts of people they should be constricted a lot mm, in terms of uh, doing that yes yeah absolutely and uh, students have a very unrealistic expectation of what they can do with it like uh, you learned one skill and uh, you're going to uh, you know, they can uh, they think that with that skill they can do a lot of mm. things right but in reality is very different right you need to first learn like coding should be a, a second like it should be a second nature mm. skill right then you can think of app designing like there is a whole thinking process of doing thing it you should think about the market how it will help the customers and those are very different skills compared to what you are doing with programming right so uh, totally get you paul so what are some of the wow moments that you have as a teacher paul right so this is the barriers and problems and all that but what are some of the uh, wow moments that you feel proud that you are teaching to students uh, just before that i will just like to add one sentence to everyone who is watching this coding is not everything theek hai agar aapko coding nahi aata that's totally mm-hmm. fine jab tak aapko khud se man na ho to isme mat ghuso yaar bahut dimag kharab ho jayega aapka mm-hmm. bhi so coding is just a skill set yeah. if you like it then do it absolutely absolutely very right on so apne hisab se chalo jo aapko karne ka man ho wahi karo ye mat sochna ki coding kar liya to bas zindagi pure ho gaye mere sapne pure ab to yahoo google sab mere pairon ke niche hai So, moving back to a wow moment uh, so uh, once what happened was i was taking uh, that was a live class so during my weekends uh, this was probably during the pandemic itself so live classes were going on after like from august or september i was in my hometown jharkhand so that was the last day for the students i have taught them for two months and took some x y amount of money but uh, mm-hmm. the thing was they had planned a surprise for me they gave me a frame they gave me a lot of things so i felt like i have added some value to them so mm-hmm. which made me feel proud they gave me sort of a party right. a farewell party and all so that's good right i think so as teachers these are some of the moments that you look forward to do uh, more than the money uh, morning monetary obviously we have to do it uh, we have to earn a living or make a life out of it but definitely for mm-hmm. teachers at least this is the moments that uh, sort of motivated to do further mm-hmm. things also right cool so uh, paul uh, uh, thank you thank you for providing your uh, valuable aspects on uh, the learning part and uh, teaching part of it so i have a few more questions on uh, the internship part mm-hmm. right like a, a lot of people do learn things about it and you know they they are unable to crack or go forward or navigate on how to get the internship right so i wanted to pick your brain on how you got your first internship what was the preparation and how did it work for you right so that that aspect before that i'll just like to add some special thing that which i have done and i feel very proud of it so uh Uh, i have helped absolutely please go uh, nine please. of my friends i have helped nine of my friends to gain internship in xyz company of somewhere with a stipend of somewhere between 5000 to 15000 so that's something i'm really proud of i don't brag about it but i'm really proud of it mm-hmm. <laughs> apart from that i have also no no you're doing very good job uh, on that paul <laughs> thank you thank you so also apart from that so my sister is a corporate trainer and i have totally uh, removed her from the corporate business mm-hmm. and helped her become a freelancer so she is a full time freelancer now and she is in a good state now right now better than what she was so these are something i'm proud of right now right going back to absolutely and very inspiring <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> so going back to the path which i told them to take and which actually helped me out was okay i did some mooc i created a community for me first of all i created a community for me which were having like minded people when we have like minded people they will refer you a lot in many places so the same thing happened for me uh, so things were quite easy for me because my mm. family had a bra- background from tech okay so my uh, uncle he is ha- is a owner of a startup and he is having a tech company okay and which is running quite well mm-hmm. in ludhiana 
Okay. So right, my right. first internship was over there itself, and I came to learn. It was a stipend-based internship. I was giving an inter. I had given an interview over there, but still, as it my uh, uncle was the founder, so things got quite easy for me for the first phase. Uh, moving into the second phase, from which actually my hunt began. So what I did was in my community, I asked each and everyone what they were doing and. how did they crack things up so what i found it out that people or hrs they look into your resume basically not the udemy and coursera courses but the projects you are doing mm. okay. so whatever x y z okay. projects okay. which you believe are good okay it doesn't have to be absolutely amazing but yeah it should be good enough so people right now what they believe if, if i'm talking about projects they want a end to end projects it's mm-hmm. totally fine if it's not a end to end project as you are applying for internship okay so mm-hmm. there's a difference between an internship and a full time job theek hai ek intern se log utna expect nahi karte jitna ek full time job se karte hai so whatever projects you have created make a resume very good portfolio resume and be very Abs- much active absolutely. in linkedin okay don't mention all the like whatever courses you have done or whatever moocs you have done online those are useless your certificates are useless i'll be very true those are useless just by seeing all the videos in udemy or getting a certificate don't think that that will give any value to you okay your skills and what you have learned it mention all of the things in your resume and the projects you have done okay and nowadays what i have seen is hrs and talent acquisition mostly they are very much active in linkedin after this pandemic if you see the graph of people who are there in the linkedin user base it has been doubled almost doubled i am specifically talking about the hrs and talent acquisition so we very much active in Absolutely. linkedin and try to post something which adds value to your content so your content should be always based on uh, let's say you are a data scientist so your post should be somewhere related to data science python something like that that's one of the things that you should be maintaining a portfolio that is having a very good resume Absolutely. and a very good user base or community where would you get the community you don't have to create a instagram page like me but what you can do is you can just create a linkedin account for two months be very much active mm-hmm. on that and see how things are different from where to you were okay these two th- after these two things are over the third absolutely. thing which, absolutely uh, i tell people to do is what i have told my friends to do and which have actually helped them in linkedin everybody replies or let's say 80% of the people mm-hmm. will reply to your message so what i told them was go to the startups search for startups mm-hmm. don't go for mncs a fang ka sapna do dekhoge itna jaldi to nahi ho sakta we belong from tier 3 and we have to go step by step yeah. at sakta. least i am from tier 3 yeah mm-hmm. so ho sakta hai it's like going step by step mm-hmm. if you think from this level you are directly jump over here mm-hmm. so it's not possible right so you have to gain that experience right, right. then only ek bar chalang nahi laga sakte you have to take step by step yes yes that's the point so what i tell them is jitne founder hai there are very very like a lot of founders are there theek hai तो लिंक्डइन में ऐसे और आजकल तो इफ यू सी द केस ऑफ बैंगलोर हर कॉलेज से दस स्टार्टअप हो रहे हैं तो पॉइंट ऑफ माइंड और दैट अगर आप देखो बैंगलोर के हर एक कॉलेज से दस फाउंडर्स तो निकल ही रहे दस स्टार्टअप्स हो ही रहे ठीक है विच मे बी सक्सेसफुल मे नॉट बी सक्सेसफुल ठीक है बट दे विल बी नीडिंग पीपल ठीक है दे विल बी नीडिंग पीपल सो वट वी कैन डू इज Just go to the founders. उनके पास ऐसे भी ज़्यादा employees नहीं होंगे. Maximum दो से तीन होंगे. Ask them that uh, I am a data scientist or I want to intern in data mm. science. Don't ask for jobs directly to them as we don't have that much of experience right now. Just ask them I am looking for a data science internship mm. and see what they mm. say. Send your resume to them and ask mm. them. So probably they will help you out. Okay, I right. most of the founders right. they are very genuine and like Absolutely. they are very amazing people. Whoever all the connections that I have, I can guarantee that those are amazing people which have helped me a lot. So 
I used to share my resume and with a absolutely absolutely tag mark that uh, I have learned. I am doing. I'm a final year student in this, and I'm looking for these internship. Here's my portfolio. Uh, if there's an X amount of internship, please let me know. So all the HRs, mm-hmm. I did the same thing with the HRs and the talent acquisition. So that's the way to go. So that's the formula, and uh, I'm truly inspiring uh, Paul to to you know sharing this journey. And I hope whoever is watching this, right, please write down all the steps that Paul has told. These are like the only tricks that is going to make you uh, get things results yes. faster, yes. right? There are other methods, definitely. There are other ways to do it, right? But if you if you are struggling and uh, if the struggle period is too long for you, then give this method a try, and definitely you will see that you know you are reaching out to people and trying to help them do stuff from the startup mm-hmm. world, right? It's it's a sure shot way because, as like Paul Paul was mentioning, there is a lot of potential, a lot of skills that are required by startups, and you can help fill that gap, and so. Do that and see how it turns out. Thank you for uh, sharing this wealth of information, Paul. And, um, um, you know, if you want to reach out to Paul or follow him on Instagram, I'll put all of his links, uh, his LinkedIn profile and his uh, Instagram page on the description section below. And do follow him on LinkedIn. He has very interesting uh, value bombs that you can say uh, on the LinkedIn profile. Reach out to him. He's very down to earth, uh, you know, very approachable, like, like he's been doing it, like the community gave it to him. He's also that approachable. Reach out to him, very candid guy, and he'll help you out in whatever ways uh, possible. But uh, thank you, Paul, for coming on the show and doing this. Uh, it was a pleasure. And uh, sharing value to the <laughs> audience. It was a pleasure of mine to be with you in the show. And just a last tip for everyone. Jo dikhta hai, wahi bikhta hai. To dikhao apne aapko, to tum bik jaoge. Absolutely. You nailed it. Uh, uh, You know, make some noise and then you'll get it.